We are back with the Democratic candidates for Hines County Sheriff. So far, Victor Mason and Lee Vance have talked about public safety and how to solve some of the issues plaguing the detention center. We're going to move into a different subject now, opioids. They are of huge concern in Mississippi right now. According to the Mississippi Bureau of Narcotics, 70 to 74 percent of all overdose deaths in Mississippi were opioid related. So we want to know as sheriff, how can you help stop opioid abuse? And Sheriff Mason, we'll start with you. I think the one of the answers to this is the ones that we have detained uh, can be educated on the dangers. In other words, they're in there now, but we can hit it off. We can we can educate them on the dangers of it, because a lot of a lot of them in there don't know, and and they've experimented with this, and uh, I think it just starts with education. I agree, I actually agree, and and what happened the, the education piece that really needs to be put in place is just because something comes out of the medicine cabinet at home or uh, something is in a, a pill form, it is just as devastating to your life as a piece of dope that you buy off the street. Mm -hmm. And also research has shown that a lot of people that get started on these opioids are getting started out of the, the bathroom uh, with the medicine cabinet. So parents have to be educated about watching what your children are doing right keeping track of that medicine and air you know once a year or so the DEA will collect those old uh, pills and prescriptions uh, we need to widen that everybody needs to make that a bigger deal every year but I think it's going to come down to parents at home and, and the education piece because if you've got that prescription medicine in your house you need to keep up with the usages and when it gets to be expired it needs to be disposed of okay there is a big push right now to give Mississippians the chance to vote on legalizing medical marijuana to get that on the ballot in 2020. We want to know how do you see that impacting Hines County if medical marijuana is legalized? And Mr. Vance, we'll start with you. If it's legalized, uh, I don't have a problem with it. If it's um, if it can be used as a medicine to ease somebody's pain then I do not have a problem with it as long as it's regulated and it's controlled because marijuana uh, is, is, is the medicinal, the medicinal, well, I'm sorry, medicinal, I can't say that word, I forget about it. Anyway, it's been shown through research after research that it's good at helping people cope with pain. And if it would help <clears throat> very sick people cope with pain, then I'm all for it. Sheriff Mason. I can agree. Uh, the thing that scares me about it is you know, and well as I know, it's going to be abused. And as long as uh, the administrators can keep a lid on it and just not let it go into the black market and be sold on the streets for everything, I don't have a problem with it. Okay. Well, we have seen two mass shootings this month in El Paso, Texas, in Dayton, Ohio. Officers in Dayton, Ohio, were able to respond to the scene of that shooting in 60 seconds, which authorities agree likely saved number of lives there. So we want to know if the sheriff's office has enough deputies to be able to do the same thing. Sheriff Mason, we'll start with you with that question. We constantly train with other agencies uh, for massive shootings. We do it all the time. You don't ever let up. Uh, our SWAT team has combined with Jackson, Clinton, and we always, it, in fact, we did it just two weeks ago. So we're always on top of it and we're reading news feeds because you just, there's a trend that's going around the country and we must be ready. Mr. One of the best things that happened with that particular issue, if you go back to what happened in Columbine years ago, the first responding officers actually got there in a short amount of time, but they were trained or not trained on how to actually handle an emergency like that. They were staging on the campus waiting for SWAT teams to come. Well, it was determined that when officers get that particular call, regardless of who they are or what their position is, their job is to go into the school and stop the threat. So our law enforcement agency at the Jackson Police Department was trained to do that. I'm confident in what the sheriff has said about the SO because that's a very high priority for uh, law enforcement. 
want to talk about chases now. Police chases, you guys know, can sometimes reach high speeds, putting members of the public in danger. When should Hines County initiate a pursuit? Mr. Vance, we'll start with you. Well, the first thing I would like to know that I don't know before I can answer that question is actually whether they have a policy or not. Uh, we had a policy at the Jackson Police Department that actually governs when we got involved in chases. We did not chase for misdemeanors, and very few property crimes are we going to chase for. We chase to try to save lives. And when the chase presents more danger to the public than not chasing, then we did not chase. And we had a very strict policy uh, that we followed. And if you didn't follow the policy, you had problems with me. I was one of the ones that always spoke out about uh, pursuits coming into Jackson from outside agencies. For the most part, you have seen innocent people that didn't have anything to do with whatever crime was committed, being injured or killed in these things. So you have to have a very strict policy that everybody knows they're, they're going to be held accountable for. And if they don't have a policy over there, when I'm elected, they will. Sheriff Mason. We have a policy. It was implemented day one when I took over. It's a written policy. Uh, every officer that drives a cruiser uh, has signed that policy. And uh, they know. They know that if we initiate it, it's, it the uh, supervisor calls it off at a certain time. We also assist other agencies, uh, but we don't really get directly involved. But we do have a written policy, and it's, like I said, been there since day one. If you look at some of your own news footage of some of these chases coming into uh, Jackson, you'll see the Hines County Sheriff's Department was right in the chase. Uh, there was either a, a situation a couple years ago where somebody lost their lives being chased by the Hines County uh, Sheriff's Department. So it's apparent to me, just on, from what I've seen, that whatever policy they have to me is too lenient because you still see them participating in chases either that they initiated or participating in chases that have come into Jackson from outside agencies. You can probably see it on your own news footage. Sheriff Mason, if you want to respond, I'm going to close it. Well, uh, I'll say it again. We assist other agencies. We uh, hardly ever initiate any chases because they are so dangerous. And if we do, it's called off within so many seconds. Okay. That's it for questions, guys. We're going to move into our closing statements right now. You know you'll have one minute for your final thoughts. And since we started with Mr. Vance, we'll now start with Sheriff Mason for your closing statement. Thank you so much. And again, I'd like to thank Channel 16 for hosting this event. Ladies and gentlemen, this race is crucial. It's very crucial. Um, I can say without any doubt that we have done the job you asked us to do. We've done it, and I can say that uh, we need your help in continuing what we started. I ask for your prayers, I ask for your support, and I ask for your vote. So on the 27th, please vote Victor Mason for Hines County Sheriff. Mr. Vance. With all due respect to the sheriff, he's asking for four more years. Well, four more years of what? People getting beat to death in the jail, escapes, people eating turkey legs inside the jail. I haven't heard him articulate anything in this form or other forms that we've attended together, any type of vision on how we're gonna have long-term solutions for these problems. I'm not gonna sit here or stand here and blame him for the Hines County Detention Center, because it, it was built in 1994. But I think what the voters should hold him accountable for is not making any progress not articulating any vision on how we're gonna have long-term solutions for this. I consider myself to be a problem solver. I consider myself to be a, poli a police administrator and part of what, uh, and all of my particular uh, talents would tell me that we've got to work together as a, as a community, work together as elected officials to bring some permanent solutions to some of these problems. So I'm asking the folks in Hines County uh, to vote for me uh, the runoff election is going to be on August the 27th, and I believe I'm the best candidate for the job. So vote for me and give me an opportunity to prove it. Gentlemen, thank you for All being right. with us this evening. This was so informative for voters as we head to that August 27th runoff. 16 WABT will, of course, cover the runoffs throughout the night after the polls close. You can stay up to date on WAPT.com and, of course, by using the 16 WAPT mobile app.
Thank you for watching.